Asia's glaciers are shrinking. With Asian glaciers facing a massive melt by the end of the century, millions of people are at risk of water shortages, and it's all thanks to global warming. The high mountains of Asia lie in a region surrounding the Tibetan Plateau and contains the largest store of permanent ice outside the North and South Poles. Meltwater feeds into major rivers like the Indus, Yangtze, and Mekong and are used for drinking, hydroelectric power, and irrigation. Scientists predict that Asian high mountain glaciers will lose a third of their mass by 2100 if the global temperature rises 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. If temperatures increase 3.5, 4, or 6 degrees, losses could reach 49, 51, and 65 percent respectively. Glacial loss could affect the region's water supply and lead to shortages. At the same time, accelerated melting could trigger intense flooding, especially when combined with climate change-induced heavy rains and super typhoons. High warming scenarios carry worse consequences, including massive sea level rise, floods, droughts, loss of species, and even disease. The only way to avoid such a dismal future is by minimizing global temperature rise. And for that, we need to double, even triple efforts to combat climate change. Climate change is bringing on the apocalypse. Thought climate change predictions were scary. Well, they just got a whole lot scarier. The possible effects of climate change are far worse and could come far sooner than we previously thought. So says James Hansen, a leading climate change researcher who was among the first to warn the public about the serious effects of a buildup of carbon dioxide. The former director of NASA's Institute for Space Studies, along with 18 other leading climate scientists, published a paper this week predicting rapid sea level rises could happen within decades. A team of researchers primary claim that as the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica melt, a layer of cold fresh water will build up over the ocean, trapping warmer, salty ocean water, with which it doesn't easily mix, underneath the surface, and thereby leading to a feedback loop that causes ice shelves to melt even more rapidly, effectively slowing down and possibly shutting down ocean circulation, an idea apparently not too dissimilar from the premise of the 2004 disaster movie The Day After Tomorrow. The scientists believe that this ice melting will cool polar regions of the globe and warm areas around the equator, causing stark temperature variances that could make superstorms, such as Hurricane Sandy, which struck the U.S. East Coast with devastating effect in 2012, far more frequent. To argue their case, the researchers controversially claim that storms during the warm Eemian period 120,000 years ago were powerful enough to lift massive boulders 1,000 tons in size, from the bottom of the ocean and hurl them ashore. Hansen and his team believe a multimeter sea level rise could occur before the end of the century and envelop all of the planet's coastal cities. Despite the dire predictions, Hansen, in an accompanying video, explained that there may possibly still be an opportunity to reverse this worrying trend, saying, quote, I doubt that we have passed the point of no return, but frankly, we're not certain of that. Climate change has already caused islands to vanish. A new study led by University of Queensland researchers say that changes in global climate and the subsequent sea level rise has already led to the loss of multiple Pacific islands. A team of Australian scientists say that Isabel, one of the main islands of the Solomon Archipelago, has already lost five of its reef islands. Another six islands on Isabel have declined in area by more than 20% between 1947 and 2014. Meanwhile, residents of the island of Nuatambu have been forced to relocate to the nearby main island of Choiseul because of flooding. Of the dozens of homes that once stood on Nuatambu, at least 11 have already been swept away by the rising waters. While the global average rate of sea level rise has been 3.2 millimeters per year since 1993, the Solomon Islands have experienced an average rise by about 7 to 10 millimeters per year since 1994. The research team, who published their study in the journal Environmental Research Letters on Friday, discovered that the sea level rise has destroyed villages that have existed since the 1930s and has displaced numerous communities. Middle East and North Africa soon to become uninhabitable. A group of researchers believes temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will rise dramatically over the course of the 21st century. 
The research suggests even if Earth's average temperature increases by 2 degrees Celsius, summer temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will increase more than twice that. The temperature could rise to 46 degrees Celsius during daytime by mid-century, and it could be as high as 50 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. Also, heat waves could occur 10 times more often than now. The hottest period lasted for about 16 days on average between 1986 and 2005. However, these areas will experience 80 days of extreme heat per year by mid-century, and up to 118 days by the end of the century. The increasing air pollution caused by desert dust storms could make the environmental conditions intolerable, forcing people to migrate. Global warming could unleash viruses and permafrost. Scientists warn that climate change is melting permafrost soils, which may lead to the release of ancient viruses and bacterium. Permafrost is permanently frozen soil. It is a good preserver for microbes and viruses because of low temperatures and the lack of oxygen. As temperatures in the Arctic Circle rise, the permafrost melts, which may lead to the release of trapped viruses. Layers of permafrost could also be exposed by mining and drilling operations. Meanwhile, bacteria that can form spores are able to survive longer compared to bacteria that do not form spores. In August 2016, more than 20 people were reportedly infected by the anthrax virus that was released by thawed permafrost in the Yamal Peninsula in the Arctic Circle. How Hurricane Harvey Became So Deadly Hurricane Harvey has brought unprecedented levels of rainfall to Texas, threatening the lives of thousands or even tens of thousands. Scientists suggest climate change may have had a role to play in how the storm became so deadly. The first global warming mechanism that may have made the impact of Hurricane Harvey so severe is rapidly rising sea levels in the Houston region, making the area more likely to flood. The second factor is the rising temperatures in the region, which results in more moisture in the atmosphere, bringing more rain to the region. Human-caused global warming penetrating into the ocean past the surface also resulted in a deep layer of warm water feeding the hurricane as it intensified near the coast. Global warming may have also contributed to expanded subtropical high-pressure systems, which trapped Hurricane Harvey in the middle, stalling it near the Texas coast. Scientists say it is difficult to establish a link between climate change and a specific storm, as major tropical storms occur naturally based on many different factors. However, researchers say climate change has worsened the impact. Rising temperatures could be linked to an increase in diabetes cases. A recent study shows that an increase in cases of type 2 diabetes may be linked to global warming, including 100,000 new annual cases in the U.S. alone. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about one out of every three Americans will develop type 2 diabetes. A study published in the journal BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care found that as the average annual temperature rose by 1 degree Celsius, the number of diabetes cases rose by 3.1 per 10,000 people. Researchers suspect the rise could be due to the inactivity of brown adipose tissue, a natural body fat that produces heat from burning the fat stored in organs to keep the body warm when temperatures drop. If temperatures stay warm, the inactivity of brown adipose tissue can increase fat stored in organs, causing glucose intolerance and diabetes. According to the World Health Organization, about 422 million people worldwide suffer from either type 1 or type 2 diabetes.